Okay, this video is on making surf casting sinkers part three. If you watched my other two videos, part one and part two, uh, there's some information out there that's uh, a little bit outdated. I want to give you some important updates so you can find the right products. So let's get started. The, uh, the first thing I want to mention is, is you know, well, why would you want to make your own uh, sinkers? Well, look at this price at Bass Pro, $5.89. You know, need I say more? These things can be expensive out there. And uh, not only that, it's a lot more satisfying making your own gears, rigs, sinkers, etc. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is these molds. Now, I... Um, I told you about a mold in uh, the first video, and that mold really isn't available anymore. So we're going to update that, and you're going to get your molds at Jan's Netcraft. And uh, this particular mold gives you a 2 and 3 and 4 ounce, and then you got one down here for a 5 and 6 ounce. You know, I find that the 5 ounce is my most popular. I can use a, a, a 4 ounce in uh, Com C's, but any type of chop out there, and that's usually when the pomp are biting with a, when you're battling the elements a little bit, you're going to need a 5-ounce sinker. So I would go with this mold right here. Uh, and uh, like I say, that's Jan's Netcraft. They got a lot of their good stuff too. They got some of those red faceted beads I use and uh, a few other things. So enough about that mold. That's the one you want from Do It Corporation. The other thing I want to talk about real quickly here is the melter. You know, this is the Lee Precision Melter. And make sure if you're buying a melter, you know, you don't have to necessarily buy it from Amazon. Don't get the melters that have the pour lever and it pours from the bottom. All it's going to do is plug up on you with slag. You don't want to go that route. And trust me, these guys are the best. You, you don't want anything less. You know, it's going to heat your product if you've got a little... Uh, extra alloy in your lead wherever you get it from it's gonna melt it for you no problem uh, so that's it that's the melter the the uh, magnum melter furnace and that's the one you want okay the the channel lock pliers that you're gonna need uh, these uh, uh, cutting pliers this is what you're gonna use to cut the excess lead off the top of the sinker after it's molded and it's what you're going to use to get it out of the mold so you're going to need one of these and uh, I definitely would go with the 8 inch don't go with anything smaller you're going to need the leverage the um, the other thing I want to talk about is the ladle this is the size ladle you want a 3 inch cup diameter uh, it holds a pound and a half of lead you won't be filling it up during the pours but uh, that's what you want. Now, uh, this price seems a little steep here. You know, you can do some Google searches and maybe find it a little cheaper. Uh, I'm not sure how much Bass Pro Shop wants. But uh, anyways, that's the oil you want. Make sure it's a cast iron. Uh, you're going to need some eyelets. These are big storm sinkers. So you're going to need uh, size number two on these Do It uh, brass sinkers. The same people that... Uh, make those uh, molds and also make a lot of the ladles out there so you can get these just about anywhere and this I believe is a uh, Bass Pro Shop price right here so now a lot of people love uh, you know might not have a garage they might not be able to make their own sinkers uh, let's say cost is a factor well I suggest doing a co-op I'm sure you got two or three fishing buddies. Do a co-op and all of you pitch in and get your parts. It's going to pay for itself very quickly. Now, let's say, you know, you just don't have anybody to share the cost with and you can't afford it. Well, you know, don't go buying these at Bass Pro for $5.89. You know, if you have to buy your sinkers, you know, go to eBay and uh, go to this sinker shed they have here. You know, you can get... Uh, 12 5 ounce sinkers, you know, this is the same mold that I told you to buy at GN's Netcraft, but uh, 12 sinkers for $18.99. So, what's that? A, about $1.60 a sinker. You know, way too expensive for me because I only pay about five cents a sinker. But if you got to buy your sinkers, you know, go to these guys on eBay. They're, they're, um, pretty good so anyways um, I've got a, a video that we're gonna have uh, that's gonna show you all of my tips 
And we're going to continue on with that, so hold on. And here's the end result. Manageable pieces that I can drop into my melter. And this is one cheap craftsman, but it got the job done. It's a real thin kerf. Uh, carbide blade and just don't let up on the uh, trigger when you're doing this. If you stop in the middle of a cut it's just going to melt to the blade and you get to whack it off with a hammer. That happened a couple times. So anyways that's how you manage your lead. Okay here's a little tip for you when you're melting lead. Let's say somebody gives you some free lead and uh, you know you cut it up into manageable pieces with a thin carbide saw. And you start to melt it and you know no matter how high you put your pot and this is a good pot this Lee Magnum melter it just is like uh, you know like cottage cheese it just doesn't turn into a liquid well that's probably because this free lead you got has an awful lot of zinc in it and that's got a higher melting point and that's your problem and uh, unless you have a huge melting pot and you want to mix it with pure lead I suggest you just give it to the recycle man. Once I get my lead cut into manageable pieces and I melt it down, I just use a normal cupcake tin here and uh, make the ingots. And, uh, you know, just make sure you skim off all the slag while you're uh, melting them down and you'll have nice clean lead to make your sinkers that are small enough to drop into your lead magnum melter. One thing I like to do is when I'm melting lead I want to make sure that when I add my lead the pots pretty much empty and I stack my lead on top of each other and that way it's preheating the lead that's uh, falling in as it uh, melts the bottom piece. You know don't get tempted to have almost a full pot of molten lead and drop in a cold piece. You know if you've if you get any type of a condensation reaction, you're going to get a visit from the tinsel fairy and uh, a pot exploding and throwing lead on you is no fun. So that's important to remember that you put your pieces in on top of each other so it preheats. Also make sure that you uh, make sure that lead is clean, no grease, dry it off, no moisture whatsoever and any dirt is removed. Uh, rust is bad too if you've got rust. Maybe use an electric wire brush to get that off before dropping it in the pot. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you is when you're skimming off all this slag, the easiest thing to use is just a good old metal teaspoon. You know, don't try to use a small ladle. This works about the best. Just get what you can, knock it off. You don't want any of that in your ingots. The other thing you got to need to do is, you know, I like to use a small ladle, something deeper, and I'll, I'll scrape the bottom, and a lot of that dirt will come to the surface. And then skim it again. You know, it won't be perfect, but just get all you can before you pour your ingots. Okay, here's the other trick that I showed you in one of my previous lead. Uh, making videos is use a candle, light it, hold it pretty much horizontal and you know hold this mold upside down and put the flame right into the cavity and what that's going to do is that's going to help you get better release when you uh, release your sinkers from the mold. Another tip I like to uh, use is uh, putting my mold on top of the pot while the lead is melting. It's going to do two things for you. It's going to heat up your mold and it's going to help you uh, prevent voids and it's also going to uh, protect you a little bit if for some reason you did have moisture in your lead and the pot blew, which doesn't happen often uh, you know only doing stupid things like putting dirty lead or moist lead is going to cause that but uh, the other thing I like to do too is, is to help my mold heat up I'll pour a couple sinkers without the clips in there and uh, then just dump them out and remelt the lead and that's going to really help heat up the, the mold even better. And another tip uh, that's going to help you make better pours is to preheat your ladle and the lead. That way it's not going to uh, 
cool off the lead too quickly when using a cold ladle. When you're making these sinkers, all you have to do is pour it in the mold and wait 15 seconds. That's it. This lead sets up quick and you're ready to go to pull it out. When I'm pulling these out, you know, and I've covered this in my previous videos, you're going to use these channel lock uh, cutter pliers. And when you grab the, uh, the lead, make sure you're only grabbing the pour and you're never touching the mold at all. Otherwise, you're going to ruin your mold. Once you grab it, don't squeeze too hard or it's going to cut it and just go left and right and it'll drop right Okay, out. this tip is on putting in your eyelets. Uh, you know, when you're making these sinkers, this mold gets hot. So there's a little bit of finesse to doing that. You don't want to use pliers or anything because you're going to nick your mold up and ruin it. So what I like to do is with my gloves on, I hold on to the clip like that. And then what I do is I finesse it. I push it on the edge and then I come in straight. And you'll feel it drop in and just give it a slight push. And that's it. doesn't matter if it's a little bit crooked. You know, you're good to go there. And that's about the easiest way I've found to do it. When you're making sinkers, it's a lot slower process than making those ingots. Uh, usually I've got the thermostat at eight and a half for making ingots, but when you're making sinkers, you want to dial that back to about seven and a half, otherwise your pot's going to overheat. You'll know you got the pot too hot if you start getting a, a brassy look on top of the lead. That just means you're, you're overheating it and you're going to have to skim a lot more often while you're making your pours. So. Seven and a half works good. All thermostats are different. Uh, adjust accordingly. And I will say, don't even consider any other melter except this Lee Magnum melter. Make sure you get the kind that doesn't have the pour on the bottom. It's just going to clog up. What I like to do when I'm making sinkers is keep that garage door open. Keep that pot far enough away from uh, the door so in case it rains, we don't want any water going in the pot. But more importantly, turn this fan on and aim it so it's you know, breezing past your head and not on the pot at all. You don't want to cool that down, but uh, this is going to make it a lot safer for you and you don't have to worry about any lead fumes. Same thing with uh, using safety glasses, you know, long sleeve shirts, pants, and make sure you've got uh, some covering on your feet as well. Okay, sometimes you're going to have some misfits, so you know, you want to be able to reclaim your brass eyelets, so just Put it on a piece of wire like this and just drop it back in the pot and just wait a few seconds and once we get hot enough here we'll lose our sinker and then we'll just give this a quick tap and our eyelet is still good when you're making your pours don't fill your ladle to the top all it's going to do is end up making it a lot harder to make the pour just you know, get what you need. All you need is about a half a ladle full and it's going to make the pour a lot easier. Okay, that's a wrap. We got 81 5 ounce sinkers made. We got 61 ingots made. Uh, those ingots, uh, if you go to the top of your cupcake uh, tin, they're going to be about 1 pound 10 ounces for uh, one cupcake. So that's, for me, that's like a little over five sinkers per ingot so uh, that's about 99 pounds of lead but almost 500 sinkers there so that ought to hold me for a couple of days and that's it I hope you like this video if you did subscribe to our Pompano Brownie channel and that'll do it for this video